Yeah, I think the biggest selling point of atheism might be the fact that we're not scared of our shadows. Yeah, we should probably push that harder. I mean, like, like religious people look at atheism and they oftentimes say, like, I don't know, the idea of that formless oblivion after I die, that's a little scary. And I'm like, yeah, I guess, but it's also real. You motherfuckers are scared of cartoon dragons. You're afraid about a mortal goat man that's trying to trick you into enjoying butt stuff. You're afraid when your total at the fast food joint comes to $6.66 fucking cents. I feel like the afterlifeless void fear has to pale in comparison to all the shit you have to be afraid of, right? I mean, I mean, it's tempting to say, yeah, but they don't actually believe in any of that shit, which is no doubt entirely true for some of them and partially true for the rest. Like, I mean, if you honestly believe that the king of evil had an army of invisible torture monsters engaged in a constant battle to trick you into winding up in the internal fucking pain dimension, you'd be a nervous wreck every second of every day. They can't possibly all the way believe that shit, but some of them definitely somewhat believe some of it. And even that seems debilitatingly terrifying. Of course, the way they manage to function day to day around that fear is the same way that they manage to cling to their beliefs, despite the overwhelming evidence that they're wrong. They just don't let themselves think about it all that hard. I mean, consider ghosts, right? Like I have multiple members of my family that are legitimately afraid of ghosts, despite the fact that all of those ones are Christian and there's definitely no room in Christian theology for ghosts. But somehow they maintain this demonstrably false belief enough so to be scared of it. Now, I, you know, I ask you to imagine what that must be like, but I feel like most of us can just remember what it was like. I think most of us grew out of it when we were still children, but you can probably still remember what it was like walking in that creepy ass basement or taking the trash out after dark, walking out past that spooky ass tree. You know, at, at the point where I was maximally scarable, the big thing was alien abduction. So I was terrified that there were little gray men with anal probes hiding around every corner. And I'm sure many of you maintained at least some of those irrational fears into adulthood. You know, whether they came from your religious sources or, or just from a simple lack of skepticism. But think about how irrational our fears are in these things. I mean, beyond the fact that they don't exist. I, I mean, in none of my examples would we even be remotely scared of the correct thing. I, I, I mean, like, what, what's scarier? The fact that you could get snatched up by aliens who would shove stuff up your butt or whatever sinister ass shit those aliens have in mind that required so much knowledge of the human rectum. But when the fear overtook me, I was just afraid of how creepy it would be to see those like bulbous alien heads with those featureless eyes. Consider ghosts. If ghosts are a thing, the least scary aspect of them is that they might rattle a fucking chain in your basement now and again. Right. The scary thing is the idea that after death, you could somehow get stranded on the earth with nothing better to do than bum around your old house rattling change. That posthumous limbo is so much scarier than any kind of ghost sighting. And yet that's not even the part of the ghosts that scare people. Lastly, consider Satan. I mean, him and his torture chamber are plenty scary, but the truly terrifying thing about that situation would definitely be the omnipotent deity that continues to humor the motherfucker. The God that you're worshiping that's constantly like, oh, darn it, Satan got another one of them souls. I, I better vaguely suggest which religion is correct through toast better next time, I guess. Like, that's so much scarier than the dude who just admits up front that he's all about some evil and torture and shit. So, so sure, if you think rationally about any one of those fears, you'd fear them differently. But at the same time, if you thought about them rationally, you wouldn't fear them at all. Right. But to examine questions about ghosts and Satan critically is to open up the door to doubt and eventually disbelief. Fear of the irrational is the price of being irrational, which is no more profound than to say that the price of being stupid is stupidity. But that's not the only price. Right, because there actually are things that we need to be afraid of. There are very serious issues that you can only adequately address if we afford them the proper amount of fear. Things like climate change, nuclear proliferation, the goddamn ongoing pandemic. And we've seen over and over again that those most inclined to fear the imaginary are least likely to fear these very real threats we're facing. I, sometimes I guess this is because religious people are all just all feared out, right? There's only so many things you can spend your days anxious about. Other times it's simply because they've decoupled fear from rationality and real shit takes more effort to understand. Still other times it's because their religion straight up tells them there's nothing to fear, right? Like when the end of the world is the victory condition, existential threats don't hit with the impact they probably deserve. But regardless of the individual reasons, the overriding cause is cowardice. 
Okay, when the things that you fear most are imaginary, their solutions can also be imaginary. As scary as Satan is, all you need is the magic Jesus words to thwart him. As terrifying as hell is, you're never going to go there. As scary as ghosts are, Jesus already put in a good word for you. So that's some other motherfucker's problem. When you graduate to fearing real stuff, the answers are never that simple. Hell, there's not even a guarantee that there is an answer. And thus we come to the bizarre conclusion that far too many religious people are terrified of a fearless life. 